Peter, why do you not like me? Uh, I don't really know you. Okay. Why do you dislike the things that you have seen that I have said? Yeah, I mean, you know, talking about the current uh, state of this country, um, time after time, day after day, you minimize uh, the coronavirus. You know, you did it for months. Uh, or, or I should say you did it for weeks at least. I mean, at one point in the last couple of weeks, I went back and read your Twitter timeline, and it lasted for a long time. I mean, a month ago yesterday, you said, and I quote, there's lots of fear porn out there trying to scare you, especially on social media. But we are going to be fine, and we are kicking the coronavirus's ass. Enjoy your Friday nights. Yeah. I mean, y- you know, I, I don't I don't get that. I don't get basically telling everybody the coronavirus is no problem. Go out and live your normal life. Well, first of all, when you're quoting that, there was no stay-at-home order, right? So one thing is, and you know this, I mean, going back, I could go back and, and pull clips from Dr. Fauci going on at many different shows, and I could do the same thing for Mayor Bill de Blasio. I could do the same thing for uh, Andrew Cuomo. I could do the same thing for Nancy Pelosi. I could do the same thing for Donald Trump. Politicians across the political spectrum adjust their opinions of the coronavirus based on the current data that is in front of them right now. And the current data that is in front of us right now is the coronavirus, based on the IHME model, is less likely to kill uh, as many people as died from the flu two years ago, right? So I am concerned, and I think there are a lot of people out there listening right now who are concerned, that we have to make sure that our response to the coronavirus doesn't also simultaneously destroy the economy. There are 17 yeah, million people that, out there who have, who have lost jobs. I, I totally agree, and it's tragic. It's absolutely tragic. And I'm eminently empathetic with all the people who've lost their jobs. But I'm sorry, at some point in the history of the country, I mean, I live in Brooklyn, New York. Uh-huh. Okay, the other day, my wife and I walked our dog past the Brooklyn Hospital Center. In, you know, hospitals all over New York, all over Brooklyn, have these refrigerated semi trailers where I don't know how often during the day, but, you, you know, we've seen it on the news quite often. Forklifts will pick up bodies from inside, from like a hospital gurney, and they don't want to touch the body. They don't even want to touch the body bag. And they put them in these refrigerated semi trailers because, for the time being, funeral homes in New York are just simply overrun and they can't bury people fast enough. Uh, and so the, the, the reason why there has been some success and the numbers are not absolutely skyrocketing is because cities like San Francisco, cities like New York, uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to hear stories of other cities that have taken this seriously. If they didn't take it seriously, if everybody just blithely said, ah, you know, we're going to get over it, it's the same as the flu or, or whatever, uh, you know, there would be a gigantic death toll. As it is, there's still, whatever, 23,000 dead, and I'm sure that number is going to continue to climb. Okay, so we're talking to Peter King. The initial reports that came out, uh, you were upset because I said, based on looking at China's numbers and also looking at the numbers from South Korea, from Singapore, from Japan, and also from Hong Kong, that I did not expect for this total to be very substantial, right? China lied, right? Clearly. And many people in Europe uh, who are leaders across the political spectrum, whether it's a conservative like Boris uh, Johnson or it's a liberal like uh, Angela Merkel in Germany, a lot of people across the political spectrum believed China and the World Health Organization, including me, including many other people out there. I predicted that thousands would die. Thousands are going to die, but I predicted that it would be in the low thousands. And now it's going to be around, we'll see, 60,000, 50,000 seems to be the expectation right now. As you said, 23,000 people have died already. Do you agree that China lied and that China's lies influenced many people across the political spectrum in the way that they chose to respond in both Europe and the United States? I don't know enough about it to make a to make a. Uh you know, an educated answer. Okay, well, let me just, just I understand, and I totally understand that, but you are ripping me for my predictions, and I'm telling you that all of the intelligence agencies out there 
are saying China lied. Washington Post, New York Times, probably organizations that you trust eminently are saying that tens of thousands of people actually died in China. And so those numbers that I gave out uh, early on back in March before we knew that China lied have been inaccurate in many ways because of China lies. Now, similarly, I'm sure you saw this, the, uh, the, uh, the, the group, the Imperial College in London, they forecast that 2.2 million people were going to die uh, if we didn't do anything, right? Over 500,000 in England. I'm sure you saw that report, right? Yes. And I think that I think it's absolutely true. Okay, so if you think that's true, then wouldn't you have to give credit to Donald Trump, a man you called the most dangerous person in your lifetime for potentially if you believe 2.2 million people would have died if we had done nothing and we're going to end up, according to the IHME model, at around 60,000, wouldn't you have to give credit to Donald Trump along with the governors and mayors in this country for saving millions of lives based on their response to the coronavirus? Saving millions of lives. Um, I mean, you know, I believe that there is a lot of credence in the New York Times report on Sunday that he was far too late. Okay, I understand the timing. Look, we can argue, and look, this is the perfect Monday morning quarterbacking, right? Because certainly when you... And Clay, one one other quick thing. I'm at NBC now. I don't do Monday morning quarterback anymore. The column is football morning in America for I, the I, last two years. I apologize. Football morning in America. So, But if you believe that the forecast from the Imperial College of 2.2 million people could have died from the coronavirus and we're going to end up with 60,000, which is the most recent forecast from the IHME model, University of Washington, which is being cited by the White House, the difference between 2.2 million and 60,000 is massive, right? Millions of lives uh, I, and I'm not great at math, but I believe that would be right. over 2.1 million lives would have been saved by the way we responded in the United States. How do you not your, give— your question, your, your question basically is, I should give credit to Donald Trump for saving all these lives. Is and, that and, the, and the governors and the mayors right, who have yeah. all worked together. Yeah, the, governors, over... the governors have been more fact-based. You know, Donald Trump has been fleeting. He's been elusive. His, you know, he, he goes from one story, you know, the corona, one day we're going to wake up and it'll just go away. Okay, I, I mean, understand I understand those, it's, those, those it's criticisms. So you're, you're not a fan of Donald Trump, but I'm just saying if you, you want to give credit to the governors and, you know, you can say, look, Gavin Newsom did a good job. You can say Andrew Cuomo did a good job. You might even be able to say Ron DeSantis did a good job because the numbers are not very bad. I would Florida. not say, I would absolutely would not say that Ron DeSantis did a good okay. job. But my question is. a day late and $40 short. Okay, in your opinion. But if if we had said, if if let's say that Donald Trump, we end up having a million people die in this country, and the governors respond the exact same way that they already have responded, right? Wouldn't you blame Donald Trump because he's the president? Like, the same way you're talking about your, your column in, in football. We know that the quarterback gets way more blame and way more praise than he deserves because he's the guy at the apex of the team, right? Team wins, quarterback's great. Team loses, right. quarterback stunk. If Donald Trump is able to hold this number down to fifty or 60,000 people, which seems somewhat likely right now, doesn't he deserve credit because you said you believed that 2.2 million people were going to die? If that number comes in at fifty or 60,000, I agree. I wish that... Far fewer people had died, right? Everybody, regardless of their politics, is opposed to this virus and opposed to death. But doesn't Donald Trump deserve credit for saving over 2 million lives based on the model that you believed and what's going to end up happening? It's very hard for me with the leadership that he has given. And I watch most of his performances every day. It's hard for me to give him credit or doing anything, you know, to stop the flow of this. But isn't this uh, isn't death. this a bottom line does. business? I understand it could be hard for you to give him credit, but if you truly believe that 2.2 million people were going to die, and you talked about the difficulty of walking around Brooklyn, the and I can well of imagine 2. it. 2.2 million people to die was absolutely real if nothing was done. Right, but so but Donald here, Trump. Here's what you have. Here's what you did have. something. Like, okay, let's. Here's here's what you have in the state of New York. Okay, every day around eleven o'clock in the morning, 
Andrew Cuomo comes on and he explains exactly what has happened. In and I agree state, with you. I think Andrew Cuomo state. has done a very good yeah. job communication wise. I think I think he's, he's been he's very been, good. He's been tremendous. But but anyway, all we sort of want are the facts and we want to know what the medical professionals say. We don't want campaign appearances. We don't want, hey, look at the great job I'm doing. Nobody cares. We want results. And Clay, if if 40 or 50,000 people die, I will probably say that the response of the government was helpful in that few people dying. But what I believe has been most helpful is people staying home. And again, I am extremely empathetic with all these people who have lost their jobs. I'm sick about it. I'm sick about it, as we all are. But uh, without having this stay-at-home order, uh, with these stay-at-home orders, look at the city of San Francisco. You know, my daughter lives out there with her family, and they've been cooped up in their house for five weeks. No doubt. Or or however long. But the president has been been helpful. That is what. With the stay-at-home orders. Yes, he has. He has. You wanted to go back through my old tweets, and so I've got one from you. You said that Donald Trump is the most dangerous person in your lifetime. You tweeted that. That's my. That is my belief, and a lot of people have said, "Well, what about the? What about Kim Jong Un? What about Bin Laden? What about?" I'm talking about people, somebody who affects our lives every day of our lives. You but, know, Kim Jong Un every now and then rears his ugly head. And who knows, maybe one day we'll all look at him as the worst human ever. Uh, but but I just look at this with a history of documented lies in the highest office in our land, with bullying people, with demeaning people, with making fun of handicapped people, uh, all of these things. His wife has been an anti-bullying advocate, and she has to look at her husband, Sleepy Joe Biden, all of these things. Every person in America who goes up against Donald Trump understands that it's going to end badly. Okay, but, and but, it but almost always with all does. of that, all of that in context, I would probably disagree with you. I think Osama bin Laden was a clear and present threat and was probably the most dangerous threat of my life. Now, I'm 41, so you know, you're a little bit older than me, but I think most people out there would agree that Osama bin Laden was more dangerous than Donald Trump, but you just agreed that Donald Trump may have saved two million lives, which is more I lives did not than. I say that. I well, did so not you say said, that. Hold on. I said, hold on. You said contributed. Government and I contributed. Will certainly run, give, by, I will run by certainly the president. Give Donald hold on. Trump. You're, the logic of your statements. You said you believe 2.2 million people may have died. Now, right. the president of the United States is going to end up with 50 or 60,000 people dying. So. You're not willing to give any of that credit to Donald Trump? I'll give him some credit if okay. that's how it ends up. So Donald, it's possible. Credit. If that is true, then Donald yep. Trump will have saved more lives as the president of the United States than any president since Harry Truman dropped the bomb on Japan. Like that will be How many more lives could he have saved by acting earlier? Possibly possibly if he had acted. Now, this is an interesting question. When would you have liked for him to have acted? I, I don't have a timeline in front right. of me. Well, let me, clearly, let me walk through the yeah, timeline. So he stopped travel to China on January 31st. You would agree that's probably a good move, even though it was called racist and xenophobic to do so? I thought it was, a, I think it's a very good move. Okay. So a lot of his critics said that's racist and xenophobic. Uh, in March, he decided to stop travel to Europe. I imagine you would agree with that being a good move as well. Yes. And you agree with every decision that he has made uh, in terms of advocating stay-at-homes, endorsing that since, you know, basically March 11th or 12th, whatever the day was when this started for many people across the country uh, into March. So you agree with that. So really you're focused on February. No one had died in February. And so what do you think people would have said? What are, what are the medical experts? What are the medical ex- experts telling him last week of February, early March? Look, nobody knew anything about this at the end of well, February. Well, we know, the, we know honestly, Peter, combine. we know what the experts were saying, assuming they were saying the same thing on television, because Dr. Fauci went on the last day of February and said there's no reason for anybody to be afraid. There's nothing for people to be afraid of. Think about this. If he had made a really aggressive move in February before anybody died, 
if he had come out and said, we're going to have a national stay-at-home order, and he had done that around the time that the Democrats had Super Tuesday, and while all of the Democratic uh, d- d- primaries were going on, every single person who is a Democrat or a liberal in this country would have accused Donald Trump of trying to subvert American democracy by asking people to stay home while the primary season was going on. People would have said he's afraid of Bernie Sanders. He's afraid of Joe Biden. He's afraid of Mayor Bloomberg. Every single person, whoever was still in the race, Elizabeth Warren, every single person, you know this, would have come out and said this guy is an autocrat dictator if he had done it before there was actually death in this country. So I think you're possibly right. Is it possible that if everything had gone perfectly, instead of 50 or 60,000 people, we might have ended up with 40 or 30 dying? But if that had happened, but if that had happened, Peter, still 2.2 million compared to 50 or 60 versus 30 or 40, that's pretty good. In football context, you're talking about the difference between a guy who goes out and has a perfect score on his passer rating and a guy who goes out, which I think is a 158.4, and a guy who goes out and posts a 135. Both of those are pretty good numbers. i just like the President of the United States to listen to science and be consistent. That's what I'd like. You know, the, 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 uh, the trail, the paper trail, the email trail, you know, in December and January and February is that he ignored a lot of the warning signs. That's but even, all. and again, That's I'm all. not saying the president's well, whatever, perfect. Whatever, whatever. I, I, look, I, I didn't, I mean, Peter, you know, I, didn't bottom vote, line in this, I didn't vote for Donald Trump. This, Clay, is, the bottom line in this, Clay, is that I disagree with what I consider on your part to be totally downplaying what now is killing seven or eight hundred, six or seven hundred people in, in New York every day. Well, I, I, but, but what I'm saying is problem. you are using uh, tweets that are months old to argue about what I'm saying right now. And I think people who are listening to this program every day for three hours or who regularly consume my content know that I have adjusted all of my opinions as the story has changed. And so I believe right, what I've been trying you, to do. Didn't you discuss them? Didn't you discuss? Didn't you discuss them like as they were absolute rock solid facts like a month ago and and they weren't that it was not dangerous and and it is no, dangerous what I and said, it was dangerous then what what I said oh, I we got to go to the break here cuz the show is ending I appreciate you coming on I appreciate you donating to charity I'm going to be donating to charity as well follow Peter King thank him for coming on at Peter underscore King uh, we have a we, the show ends in like 30 seconds here Uh, What I have said from the get-go is that we don't need to believe every bit of fear porn that is out there because the data does not reflect that everybody who's going to get this is going to die or that we should shut everything in the country down forever. And that's what I've consistently talked about. It's why I've tried to share optimistic stories on this program. Uh, It's why I have uh, come on and tried to be as honest with you guys on a day-to-day basis as I can. Now, there's still a lot of data we don't know the answer to. How many people actually have this infection in the United States? We don't know. How many, what percentage of the people who get this infection actually die? We don't know. How accurate are the models? Peter King just said he believes 2.2 million people would have died if we hadn't done anything at all. I'm not sure that I believe that. I think that model was flawed. I think my predictions even though they aren't great, are much closer to the total numbers than 2.2 million, and that was my prediction made months and months ago. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate Peter King for coming on. You can always reach out at Clay Travis, at Peter underscore King as well. This has been Outkick, the coverage. We may not all always agree, but I always believe that debate is better than just yelling at each other without talking. This is Outkick on Fox Sports Radio. 